Hey, what's up guys? Nate here from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles. Welcome back to Sonic Academy. Today we're doing another how to use video and we're gonna be looking at Spitfire Audio. This is their BBC SO, the Symphonic Orchestra, and this is the Discover version, which you can pick up for free right now. Let's dive in and check out what this is all about. Right, let's uh, take a listen to what BBC SO sounds like first up. And this is done mostly with strings. It took me a couple of minutes to put this together. It's, I don't even think it's quantized correctly. Not mixed, but just take a listen to what you can sketch very, very quickly with this. It's also mixed with a few of the labs um, sounds for some extra texture. But uh, yeah, here we have it. So there you have it, just a quick little sketch. And I say sketch because that's one of the main things that I think is fantastic about this. Um, even if you have a number of full, sort of very detailed orchestral libraries, um, I still think this is well worth getting simply because it is va available for free. So pretty much anybody has access to this, uh, whether you're a beginner or a professional composer. Um, but the beauty of everybody having access to this is that it makes collaborations really, really simple. Um, uh, it, you don't have to match up sample libraries with another composer to be able to work on some composition together. Uh, and then this can easily be translated from the sketch into a more detailed uh, sample library. And it can be replaced sounds and articulations and so so forth. So I, th I think it's a really good tool for quickly getting out ideas and... Uh, and then on top of that, it sounds great. So this totally, if, you, if you're not doing an orchestral composition, this can totally be used uh, just as a really good string library, for example, for pop or dance tracks as well. Um, so let's just take a look at the plugin. Uh, it's extremely lightweight, this plugin, which is fantastic. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to load up a, a full template with all the instruments loaded up, which is what I'm currently running at the moment. I will run through the template shortly. Um, they also sort of aware of each other, which is really nice. You can actually see the memory footprint from all of the loaded instruments currently, 2.24 gigs. By modern computing standards, it's minuscule that compared to some of the other libraries that you'll be loading, 2.24 gigs might just be a fraction of one patch. Uh, with some of them. Um, the download size for this entire plugin, I think, is about 200, gig, 200 megs, uh, which is kind of ridiculous for this uh, kind of sample library. Uh, there are limitations, uh, which is why it is smaller. There's only a single dynamics layer um, for the dynamics controls. Usually you would have multiple samples layered up on top of each other to cover all the different techniques for bows, the hardness that uh, the players are playing at, etc. Um, and there's also a limited amount of articulations for all of the instruments, but still uh, very, very valuable collection, this even with the limitations. Uh, so just back at the top again, you can uh, refresh the instrument here. Uh, you have your voice readout, etc. for each of the um, of the instances. Uh, you can set a specific MIDI channel per instance as well. Um, as far as I know, this is not multi timbral You can't load up multiple instruments within each one of these. You kind of just load up a new instrument for each um, track that you're working with. Uh, you have some tuning controls here, a panning control, volume control, and then here you have some settings for your velocity. So you can switch the velocity to exponential positive, for example, a linear response, shelf velocity, and exponential negative. Um, your compressed velocity as well. You have some, some more uh, settings here that you can tweak 
high velocity map to dynamics, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and full full range velocity. If you want to get a little bit more um, dynamic range in your sounds, uh, you can also reset your CC mappings here as well, or clear them entirely. Uh, the settings section, you can check this out. I'm not going to run through these too much. It just mostly pertains to the interface. Uh, you can resize it freely. Um, and there's some uh, uh, limitations to the voices that you can set up here, the preload size, etc., and the buffer settings and so forth. Right, moving on, we're going to come down to this section here. Um, you can load presets directly from here. Uh, you can search Woodwind. This will be familiar to you if you've got any of the Labs plugins. The browser's fairly similar, and you can preview. any of the patches from there. Uh, but I think more useful is this rather clever um, arrangement that they have here, which kind of mimics a real orchestral uh, layout. And you can select the various uh, so instruments directly from this section here. Uh, so let's take a listen. We've got our violins here currently. Those are our first violins, the second violins, our violas, the celli, and notice on the keyboard at the bottom here how the um, sample range is moving with each of these. Some of them cover lower notes, some of them cover higher notes. You can easily see what is playable in this section down here. Take a listen to the basses. Then this back row here, we have our woodwinds. This will be higher up. The piccolos, flutes, oboe. Clarinets and bassoons. We have our horns on the far left here. And various other brass on the right from trumpets. Right through to our tubers at the bottom. And they will be lower down on the register as well. And lastly, percussion in the back. We've got some tuned percussion, a harp and a celeste, uh, as well as some tuned timpani hits. The untuned percussion, which is a range of cymbals and other percussion bits, um, snare drums, etc. And lastly, we've got a uh, another section of tuned percussion, the glockenspiel, xylophone, marimba and tubular bells. Uh, so that pretty much covers all the instruments on offer. You'll notice now each one of these have various articulations as well uh, it's not an incredibly wide range of articulations but they are the basics and you'll sh you should be able to get by uh, as, as far as just a sketch pad is concerned quite comfortably with what you have here these are the, the most common ones uh, there isn't any legato patches um, but that's to be expected in something which is being offered for free um, so you can switch between uh, your articulations via key switches if you want uh, to do that, you can it's change the position of the key switches. If you go to this little keyboard uh, icon here and click and drag to the left or right, you'll see you can adjust where the key switches are housed. And that will be up here. So now just by uh, adjusting the key switches, we can change the uh, articulations for this patch. If you'd prefer not to do key switches, which is how I have it set up in this template, uh, you don't need to because they are so light, these plugins. It's very easy to just load a new instance of each uh, articulation into your template, um, which in my case, I prefer to do it that way. Um, you also have this lock functionality here. Once you have set up a template, you can lock this so you can't make any accidental changes to this. And then let's take a look down here. We've got the expression and the dynamics section. 
Dynamics by default is going to be mapped to uh, the mod wheel. And expression is usually mapped to CC11. Uh, but you can remap these quite easily if you'd like. If you want to map this to a different one. So I've actually got that mapped to CC14 there. Just learn CC automation on a right click and dial it in. And there you have your... Do the same with this one, for example. So the, as I said, the dynamics um, are not incredibly detailed. There's only one single dynamics layer. Uh, so they kind of act more as volume controls. They're not going to be incredibly realistic as far as the range of dynamics are concerned. Um, but again, they'll, they'll be more than enough. Uh, and at this price point uh, of being free or $49, um, that's to be expected. You really couldn't ask for more than that. Uh, so let's look at this dial here. We've got a reverb dial as well. Very simple. There's no sort of actual settings for this. You can just dial up the send amount. listen to that one again there is some reverb inherent in the samples as well it is recorded in a hall uh, but you can add some extra in there if you'd like there's no mic positions of this either um, again you wouldn't expect that in a free product but all in all this sounds pretty fantastic uh, so we've taken a look at most of uh, the operation of this plugin it is incredibly simple incredibly easy to get into um, what I'll do now is just quickly take a look at how I've set it up in this current project here. And this is how I like to work with it. I've set up a uh, Spitfire free template, uh, which I'll try and make available via the Sonic Academy website if you are using Cubase 10. Um, so basically, this is divided up into folders. You have your string, brass, woodwind, percussion folder, and then we have some labs folders down at the bottom here. These are mostly just extra textures. If you haven't used labs, I highly recommend you go and grab these as well. Very similar interface. And um, these kind of cover slightly more esoteric uh, textures and weirdness, which is quite nice to mix with the traditional orchestral samples. Um, so looking at these strings, for example, I have these uh, separated now into folders once again for the first violins, second violins, violas, cellos, basses, etc. And instead of using the key switches, if we go into violins 2, I have a separate channel for each of the articulations. And each one of these is its own instance as well. So for me, I like to work like this. It's really easy. If I want to get a pizzicato going there, I just simply select that. And hit record. Or... Oh. Pizzicato, uh, st uh, spicata, for example, and we can just jump to the the nice thing about this in Cubase is that I can play both of them at the same time as well, just by selecting them together. Not incredibly accurate. Uh, you wouldn't be having the first violins or second violins playing spiccato and the long notes at the same time. Um, but if it works for you, that's fine. Um, you can also quite easily do sort of ensembles between the two of them as well, just by selecting two at the same time as well. I believe these are currently set to spiccato. Let's put that back to long. We can even throw in some violas and cellos as well
quite nice if you want to play that across the keyboard and have that whole ensemble happening at the same time. I like having it set up like this. Um, and the same goes for the brass. As you jump into these, you'll see these ones only have two articulations each, but they are all available. Automatically for me, yeah. Most of the brass have two the long and the staccatissimo. And our woodwinds as well, also kind of a short and a staccatissimo and long again, same kind of story. And these also mapped to individual channels. And the percussion section, I have these mapped to individual channels, but not in folders. We have our harp, our celeste, timpani, untuned percussion, untuned percussion. and so on and so on. So that's pretty much uh, wraps up the usage of this and also how I would like to, uh, me personally, how I would set this up as a little sketch pad. Um, obviously this can be incorporated into your full um, orchestral um, templates as well, but I like having this little light, lightweight version just for quick ideas uh, that you can just kind of open up and it's instantly just record and get those ideas out onto paper. So yeah, BBC SO from Spitfire Audio. Do go check out their other um, sample libraries as well. They make, uh, um, they're make they probably one of the highest regarded uh, sample library manufacturers out there as far as orchestral samples go. Uh, they're fantastic sounding libraries. Um, but they are expensive. The price point for orchestral stuff is always pretty high. Uh, and I do think if you're new to writing orchestral music, um, this is a fantastic tool to kind of get into uh, how, uh, into writing this kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, go grab this from Spitfire Audio. You will have to wait two weeks uh, to download it for free if you want to support them. Otherwise, you can get it immediately for $49. Um, but if you want to go the free route, you'll need to fill out a questionnaire and wait two weeks and you will be sent the email uh, with the download uh, after that time is up. Great, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will catch you guys soon right here at Sonic Academy. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.